Hello, my name is Kira McKinnon and I'm part of the Cancer Care Alberta Patient and Family Education Team. Today I'll be talking about endocrine treatment for breast cancer to help you learn more about your medication. Be sure to write down any questions you have while watching the presentation and then you can ask your pharmacist. They'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Your pharmacist will provide you with pharmacy contact information. All the information I will be talking about today was developed by the Cancer Care Alberta Breast Cancer Pharmacists. We're going to look at a few things today. We'll start with endocrine treatment and give a general overview of what it is. You may have heard this treatment called by other names such as hormonal therapy or anti-hormonal therapy. Another thing that's important to know is that endocrine treatment is not the same as hormone replacement therapy. Hormone replacement therapy adds hormones to the body to treat hot flashes, night sweats, and vaginal dryness. We'll look at the different types of endocrine treatment, how they work, and how to take them. We'll review the possible risks and side effects that can happen, along with a few tips on what you can do to help with the side effects. And lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about what you need to know about natural health products and breast cancer. Before we talk about endocrine treatments, it's helpful to understand how estrogen affects a healthy breast cell. Normal healthy breast cells have what's called an estrogen receptor. To help explain things, let's think of the receptor as a lock and the estrogen as the key. The body produces estrogen in the ovaries to help with normal body functions. Men also produce estrogen, but in smaller amounts and in a different way. The estrogen interacts with an estrogen receptor in the healthy breast cell and inserts itself into the receptor. It's like a key opening the lock and turning on the cell telling it to work. This causes the breast cell to multiply and make more healthy breast cells, which is normal for all of us. But the same thing can happen if you have a breast cancer cell that is sensitive to estrogen. You might remember your oncologist or nurse practitioner talking to you about your diagnosis and telling you that your breast cancer is positive for hormone receptors. This means that you have breast cancer cells with receptors sensitive to the hormone estrogen. When the body produces estrogen, the estrogen inserts itself into the estrogen receptor, just like it does with healthy breast cells. This turns the cancer cell on and tells it to produce more breast cancer cells. This is what is called estrogen-positive breast cancer. Endocrine treatment is used to treat estrogen-positive breast cancer. Treating you with endocrine treatment blocks or stops the effects of estrogen in your body and prevents the cancer cells from growing. Endocrine treatments are additional treatments we can offer after everything else has been done, such as chemotherapy, surgery, and possibly radiation treatment. The two most common types of endocrine treatments are tamoxifen, which we'll talk about first, and then aromatase inhibitors, which you can see have a few different medications in the family. It's important to remember that everyone is different and has a different situation, so there are certain things we need to look at to see what treatment will work best for you. Tamoxifen is the first endocrine drug we'll look at. It belongs to a family of drugs called Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulators, or SERM for short. It competes with estrogen by interacting with estrogen receptors to block the effects of estrogen. This means that depending where the estrogen receptor lives in your body, and we have lots of them, tamoxifen will have a different effect. Remember how I said that a receptor acts like a lock and estrogen the key? Well, in this case, the tamoxifen becomes the key and turns off the cancer cell. Tamoxifen blocks the effects of estrogen, which prevents the growth of breast cancer cells. For tamoxifen, it doesn't matter if you're menopausal or not. You are eligible for tamoxifen before, during, or after menopause. It's also used to treat male breast cancer. Let's take a better look at how tamoxifen works. This is a breast cancer cell and this is the tamoxifen. Tamoxifen attaches to the estrogen receptors of the breast cancer cells. This blocks the estrogen so it can attach to the receptors. Since the cancer cell doesn't get the estrogen it needs to grow, it can't produce more cancer cells. Tamoxifen doesn't block the receptors 100% of the time, but it is much more effective than not taking any tamoxifen. Tamoxifen has been used to treat breast cancer for over 35 years, so there's been a lot of opportunity to study it. 
These studies have shown that there is a benefit in terms of what we call overall survival. This means that patients who took tamoxifen had in general a 5 to 11% better chance of living longer than those who didn't take tamoxifen. This does depend on the stage and risk category of your breast cancer, so if you'd like more specifics for your case, speak with your oncologist or nurse practitioner. Another benefit is that tamoxifen also lowers the risk that your breast cancer will come back. Now we'll look at the second family of endocrine treatments. These are called aromatase inhibitors, or AIs for short. There are three medications in this family, letrozole, anastrozole, and exemestane. Your oncologist or nurse practitioner may have already mentioned some of these options. These medications all work the same way, but if a patient is taking one of these medications and finds that the side effects are too difficult for them, they may be switched to another medication in this family to see if they can tolerate the side effects better. AIs are recommended for women who have gone through menopause, including patients in natural menopause, patients who have had their ovaries removed, or premenopausal patients who receive medication to stop their hormone production. AIs can also be used to treat male breast cancer. So let's look at how AIs work. After your body has gone through menopause, your ovaries stop producing as much estrogen as before. Remember that hormone receptor positive breast cancers need estrogen to grow and make more cancer cells. Aromatase is an enzyme in the body that changes other hormones called androgen into estrogen. We want to stop this from happening. So what AIs do is block the aromatase so the androgen can't change into estrogen. This lowers the amount of estrogen in the body available to breast cancer cells. If there's no estrogen available to attach to the hormone receptors, then there is no key to unlock the breast cancer cells and turn them on. And so the cell dies. This reduces the risk of recurrence of breast cancer. There are several large studies that compare AIs to tamoxifen used in postmenopausal women. The study showed that patients who took AIs had a 2.6% to a 4.6% better chance that the cancer would not come back compared to tamoxifen. Your oncologist or nurse practitioner will discuss the options with you and help decide which option is best for you. Both tamoxifen and AIs come in pill form and you'll take one tablet once a day. You can take the tablet any time during the day, but you want to take the tablet at around the same time every day. Pick a time that works for you so you can remember. It can help to choose a meal time since they tend to be at consistent times each day. Or set a daily alarm to remind you. If you miss taking a tablet, take it as soon as you can within 12 hours of the missed dose. But if it's been after 12 hours, skip it. Do not double up your dose the next day. You can take tamoxifen, anastrozole, and letrozole with or without food. But if you experience any nausea with the medication, we recommend taking it with food to help reduce your upset stomach. Make sure you eat something when you take exemestane, since this can affect how the medication is absorbed. It's a great idea to take exemestane after the same meal every day. You can get your prescription filled at a cancer care pharmacy. If you have an Alberta Health Care card, your medication will be covered by cancer care. There are different durations of treatment. Your oncologist or nurse practitioner may recommend you take five or 10 years of endocrine treatment in total. This may be with an AI, tamoxifen, or a combination of both medications. Five-year options include just AI for five years. A second option is tamoxifen for two or three years, and then AI for another two to three years. And the third option is tamoxifen for five years. Ten-year options include taking AI for 10 years. Option two is tamoxifen for five years and then AI for five years. And the third option is tamoxifen for 10 years. Your oncologist or nurse practitioner will discuss the options with you and help decide which option is best for you, which may also include seven to eight year options. In the next section, we'll talk about the possible side effects of endocrine treatment. We'll look at the most common side effects and how to manage them. 
Make sure you review the printed information that your pharmacist will give you when you fill your prescription. Remember that the side effects we'll talk about today are possible side effects. Not every patient will experience symptoms when taking endocrine treatment medication. Side effects depend on the type of drug you are getting and your own body's reaction. Just like some people can ride the roller coaster all day without getting sick, while other people can't even ride in the back seat of a car, side effects are experienced differently by everyone. Let's start with why some of the side effects happen. Many of the side effects happen because of a lack of estrogen in the body. Estrogen does many things for the body. It stimulates breast development at puberty, helps maintain a lubricated and thick vaginal lining, and helps maintain bone density. In the brain, estrogen helps regulate our body temperature, so when we have less estrogen, this thermostat may be affected. You may have hot flashes or night sweats when taking the medication. Estrogen may also have effects on our mood. In the heart and liver, estrogen helps the liver regulate the liver's production of cholesterol. Taking an endocrine treatment medication may affect your cholesterol over time. We recommend that you continue monitoring for this through your family doctor. A lot of side effects are similar between tamoxifen and AIs. The most common side effect with tamoxifen is hot flashes. The first couple of months will be the worst as the body gets used to the medication and it may get better over time. To help manage hot flashes, you can dress in layers, take sips of cold water, or keep your room cool at night. If this becomes unmanageable or affects your quality of life, please talk with your care providers for medications that can help. The most common side effects for AIs are muscle pain and joint pain or stiffness, as well as hot flashes. To help muscle, bone, or joint pain, we recommend regular exercise, including weight-bearing exercise. Weight-bearing exercise is when your bones and muscles work against gravity and your feet and legs bear the weight. These include exercise like walking or yoga. If you need to, you can also use over-the-counter pain medications like Tylenol or Advil. Both tamoxifen and AIs may cause vaginal dryness. When you start taking tamoxifen, it may also cause increased vaginal discharge. This is normal, but if you notice vaginal bleeding, tell your care provider. To help with dryness, you can use over-the-counter vaginal moisturizers that do not contain any hormones, like Replens or Repigyne. If you would like a list of other products that are safe and effective, you can ask your pharmacist. And remember to let your healthcare team know if you have any vaginal bleeding. Other possible side effects include weight changes and changes in mood, but these changes are not common. Tamoxifen may cause cataracts, but this is also a rare side effect. Go for annual eye examinations to check for cataracts, and if you do notice any changes in your eyesight, let your healthcare team know. Tamoxifen has two main side effects that are rare, but when they happen, they can be serious. One of these rare side effects is endometrial cancer. This can happen to less than 1% of patients. That means that out of every 100 patients, less than one will get endometrial cancer. Tell your oncologist or nurse practitioner right away if you're premenopausal and have any vaginal bleeding that is unusual. If you're postmenopausal, you need to report any vaginal bleeding. Or the other thing to report is if you have any pelvic pain or pressure. Patients who have had hysterectomies or their uterus removed do not have a risk of endometrial cancer. The second serious side effect that can happen from taking tamoxifen, but again is very rare, is blood clots. This can happen to less than 2% of patients. That means that out of every 100 patients, less than 2 will get a blood clot. There are signs of a blood clot that you can watch for. Signs include pain or tenderness in your leg, you might feel it in your calf, behind the knee, or along the inner thigh to the groin area. Swelling. Redness or color change around the skin where the clot is. The color might be a blue or purple. The affected area will feel warm to the touch. Shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. Chest pain or upper back pain, especially when you're breathing. If you feel any of these symptoms while taking tamoxifen, go to the nearest emergency room right away.
Now that we've covered tamoxifen risks, let's have a look at the risks for AIs. AIs can increase the risk of low bone density called osteopenia or osteoporosis, which can increase your risk of fracturing bones. This can be because of the lower levels of estrogen in the body, as we mentioned earlier. But even if you already have low bone density, AIs are still safe to take as long as you talk to your healthcare team about how you can help to prevent loss of bone density. Here are a few things you can do to help prevent loss of bone density. Osteoporosis Canada recommends getting 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day from diet and supplementary sources. You can use the calcium food calculator from the Osteoporosis Canada website to figure out how much calcium is in your food and take a supplement if needed. Vitamin D will help the body absorb calcium into the bones. Patients taking AIs should get up to 2,000 international units or IUs of vitamin D per day. This is usually easiest by taking a supplement. If needed, a healthcare provider might recommend a type of drug called a bisphosphonate, which can help lower the risk of bone fracture for certain patients. You should also be aware that some things can interact with your endocrine treatment, such as certain medications, natural health products, or other products such as cannabis. So always check with your healthcare team if you plan on taking any of these products well on endocrine treatment. For the next few slides, please follow along with the handout titled Natural Health Products and Breast Cancer. There are many products available to the public in the form of natural health products that can be purchased online or in health food stores or grocery stores. So what is considered a natural health product? Natural health products include vitamins, minerals, herbs, powders, and other supplements that may be taken on a regular basis as a natural medicine as opposed to being consumed as food through the diet. However, even though a product is natural, it isn't always safe. So how are natural health products related to breast cancer? Many natural health products claim to be beneficial to patients with breast cancer, but their scientific data may be limited or controversial. There are natural health products that have been shown to contain phytoestrogens. Phytoestrogens are found in plants which have estrogenic activity. There is a risk that phytoestrogens may encourage the growth of some breast cancer cells. Phytoestrogens may also interfere with hormone-type medications used to treat breast cancer. Just remember to always check with your healthcare provider before taking any supplements or natural products. Here's a list of natural health products also found on the breast cancer resource sheet. It doesn't include all natural products with estrogenic activity, but it is a start. If you look at the list, you'll see that a lot of the products listed are spices, herbs, or foods you may eat or use in your cooking. Using these products is safe, but use them in moderation. So for example, if you use ground flaxseed, the Dietitians of Canada Association recommends you use no more than one to two tablespoons per day. For soy products, the maximum is two servings per day, where one serving is equal to one cup of soy milk, or half a cup of tofu, or half a cup of soybeans. What we do not recommend is to take the items on the list as supplements or natural products like pills, tablets, capsules, or powders. Remember, if you plan to start any supplements or natural health products, make sure you check with your healthcare team first. Before we wrap up, I want to let you know about a useful resource available that you can use at home. It's a book called After Treatment, Information and Resources to help you set priorities and take action. It has information about many different things like the importance of exercise and maintaining a healthy weight, changes in sleep, mental health, and much more. If you haven't already received this book, you can download it on the Alberta Health Services website at cancercarealberta.ca. Click on Information for Patients and Families, select After Treatment, and scroll down to books and videos. We hope you found this information helpful. Remember to ask questions if you're unsure about something. It's also a good idea to review all of the handouts we gave you to make sure you understand everything. And don't forget to ask your healthcare team about other resources available to you, such as sexual health counselors and dietitians.